Hello and welcome back to the next video in my top five of each demographic series that I'm doing and today I'm going to be going over my top five um, Jose manga and then tomorrow will be Seinen. If you haven't seen the Shoujin Shonen ones, I have been uploading those over the past couple of days. So anyway, this is going to be my top five Jose manga. I did try to keep all of these lists to series that are published in English, but for the Jose list, I just had to include one that wasn't because it's one of my top five, so I had to put it on there, even if it doesn't have an English series. Hopefully, it will in the future. Okay, and let's get on with the list, and here we go. Okay, at number five on the list, we have The Ice Guy and the Cool Girl. This is a office romance Jose series that follows Himuro and he is the descendant of a snow woman and he works in this office alongside this woman called Fiyutsuki who he first met on his first day on the job. He was having trouble getting to work due to nerves. He had frozen himself because being the descendant of a snow woman, when he feels strong emotions, he like creates ice and snow. So he had frozen his legs and he couldn't move and like Fitsky helped calm him down and that's how they first met. And it's just like a cute office romance with these two characters and also their um, co-workers as well. It's, it's a bit episodic but it obviously it's, it still follows on from each other and these two are very cute the anime is also adorable so I, I love all the characters like these two these two are just adorable together and then we have the um we have the the co-worker who she is a descendant of a fox so she's like a, she's got ears and a tail and she, there's also the other co-worker who's a human man who them to kind of have a thing as well and then there's another co-worker who he went to I think it was either college or high school with and he's the descendant of a phoenix and then there's the girl she, he likes has like short green hair and glasses and then yeah there's also the boss who's like the descendant of, of Buddha yeah it, it's just cute quirky characters and in an office setting and it, it's just like adorable and the the art's very nice as well. And the covers, are I love the covers. Especially some of the later covers, they are great. Obviously you get to hear Himo's inner thoughts a lot and he absolutely adores Fiyutsuki. But obviously Fiyutsuki doesn't realise this and they're kind of just friends at the moment. But a relationship probably will eventually blossom between them and I can't wait to see it because... Yeah, I just adore this series. The, the volumes are incredibly skinny. They are still very, very worth it. I This series is great. Not too much in the way of plot, just cute office romance stuff. It's great. Like A lot of the more ones later on on the list are more plot heavy, but this one is it's just a cute, a relaxing time. Okay, my number four on the list. I have Perfect World by Ria Aruga. Um, Ice Clan Cool Girl is by Miyuki Tonogaya. I forgot to mention that. And this is a... It's not really an office romance, but they are adults. It's like a romance series between... Two people who knew each other in high school and they meet again later on in life and she finds out that this guy is now in a wheelchair. He was in a accident on his bike while just after high school, I think it was. And he's now in a wheelchair. And obviously she's shocked by this at first. But then she comes to realise that she does still like him and they like start to go closer. But there's a lot of drama in the series, obviously revolving around his disability, but also revolving around her family and other stuff like that. And there is a part in the middle where the series kind of dips, but it definitely just does pick up again closer to the end. And the last few volumes 
or what made me want to put this series on the list. It was like the last three, four volumes were absolutely fantastic. I, I adored those volumes. So yeah, it is a hard series. It doesn't shy away from the realities of having a disability. It talks a, a lot about like his struggles as well as the struggles of her as well and her family situation. So yeah, it, it, the romance isn't like an easy one. It's not straightforward. There's a lot of bumps in the road. Like he's often in the hospital for like infected bed sores and stuff like that. It also talks about how sometimes he accidentally craps himself because he doesn't always know when he needs to go and how he needs to use a catheter to pee. So it, it goes over all that stuff that manga doesn't really tend to talk about. And I really liked it for that. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very good drama romance series and I just very really liked it, especially those last few volumes. And those last few volumes are very much likely to make you cry. It is it's very it's a very good series. Which is why even though the part in the middle where they introduced the, the bit of the love triangle, which I don't like love triangles generally, but I didn't like the love triangle in this either. But because of like the ending and the beginning, even if the middle dipped a bit, I did still highly enjoy this series. And that's why I put it at number four on the list. I'm looking forward to reading her newer work, Sheltering Eaves, which I think is well, I think probably one might have just come out for that one. Maybe someday if I redo these lists, maybe five years down the line, that might be on here too. But for now, I haven't read that one. But yeah, this one's great. I would recommend it. Next up, at number three on the list, and this is the one I took liberties with by putting on a series that is not translated into English, but it, it's a it's a favourite and I had to include it. And that is Seven Seeds by Yumi Tamora. Obviously, I haven't read these physical volumes because I can't. They're in Japanese, but I have like gone through the entire manga online. So I obviously I do know the in, the entire story. I first got into Seven Seeds through the anime. I watched the two seasons of the anime on Netflix and I loved them, which I know most people who talk about the anime for Seven Seas says it's terrible. But I actually really enjoyed the anime and probably one of the few people who actually did. Although I hadn't read the manga at the time and still, I know the manga is a lot better, but I, I still can't help but liking the anime. Especially the opening songs. They're great. So yeah, Seven Seas is like... A, it's kind of sci-fi survival adventure series. And kind of way to describe it. And we follow a group of people who wake up in like in this floating tent on the water and they like had no idea how they got there. And there's like seven of them in the group. Like seven seeds. And they, and they get out of the this boat and they find land and then it's like follows them for a bit and then it also follows another group of seven people and then you get to learn that they're actually in the future and that the world ended and the government put forward this seven seeds project where they would like send. They would freeze these people and send them into the future so after the world ends they can all be woken up. And like repopulate the world. So there's like some there's Team Summer A, there's Team Summer B which is the group we follow at the beginning. There's Team Spring, Team Autumn and Team Winter and they also all have a guide with them who's meant to tell them everything upon them all waking up and explain the situation to them. 
But yeah, there was originally only meant to be four teams, but they added in Team Summer B as kind of like an underdog team to add in like more normal people because these teams were specially selective of people that they knew would like have an advantage in this world and be able to like help the team out and stuff. But Team Summer B was kind of just put together as a team of underdogs, including a guy called Arashi who was looking for his girlfriend. But after the world ended and he woke up, he obviously he's been working for her. And then this on the cover, we have Natsu, we have Seni Maru on the team too, and a few other people. And then with, we have some like main characters and basically every, every um team apart from maybe Autumn. So yeah, it's, it's a great series. It's fantastic. I mean... Uh, the artwork, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Yumi Tamora's artwork, but it's kind of grown on me since reading her stuff. But it's, it's not my favourite artwork, but I do like her colour artwork more than her black and white artwork. But yeah, I absolutely adore Seven Seeds. It's my most requested license to be coming to English, but because of facts as... I don't know if we'll get it in English because this is a Jose series. We don't get a lot of Jose series in English to begin with. It's also 35 volumes, so it's a bit of a risk to publish something of that length. And also, some of her other series, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard haven't been selling that well. So I don't know if we'll see this in English ever, but I'd very, very rather if we did. Maybe if this media was to do three and ones of Basara and they sold well, we might have more of a chance. But yeah, I, I love Seven Seas. I love the characters and the story and it's it's great. I've never read another like series quite like this one and yeah. Yumi Tamora has very good writing. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of her artwork, her writing more than makes up for it. Yeah, this this series is great, and if you want to maybe go right check it out online, I I wouldn't stop you. I'm not gonna like judge you for doing that. Yeah, Seven Seeds, number three, great series. And at number two on my Jose list. We have Something's Wrong With Us. And Something's Wrong With Us is by Natsumi Ando. This is the only Natsumi Ando series that I've read, although there is others that I would like to read. And Something's Wrong With Us, it's a mystery, suspense, romance with some like cooking elements. Yeah, this is a great series. I love the series from start to finish. I love the mystery. I wasn't expecting some of the twists and turns that were revealed in this. The romance was good too. I I, I just adored the series. In this series we follow, if I can remember her name, now. And when now was a little girl, her mother started working for a confectioner. And she... It's like a wagashi shop and they make like traditional Japanese sweets and she started working at this wagashi shop and during the time she was working there, Mao befriended little Tsubaki and they kind of became friends. And then one night, the um, the kind of the guy who owns the shop, I've forgotten what they call him, the... Um, Obviously, she's the mother is the proprietress, but he is like the owner, kind of the reader of the shop. He's murdered, and he's found dead in his room by um Subaki, and Subaki says that the person who did it was now his mother, and because of this, now his wife was turned upside down. Her mother was arrested, she she now was put into care, her mother later died in prison, 
But beforehand, she sent Mal this letter saying that she was innocent, that she's not the one who did it. So now Mal is going kind of undercover. She's calling herself Sakura. Because, like, that's the nickname she had when she was little. No, she, Sakura's the nickname that she had when she was little, and that's the only name that Tsubaki knew her by. But she is actually going by her real name now. She's going by now. And Tsubaki's due to be married soon, and Mel kind of comes to the Koketsuan, which is the name of the confectioner, and she kind of becomes Tsubaki's fiancé as a way to get close to him and investigate what actually happened all those years ago and who actually killed the head of the place. And we follow her and Tsubaki, and there's also Tsubaki's mother, who's the proprietor's, Who's a she's a right terrible terrible person, and there's also other characters involved, and the grandfather as well, Sabaki's grand Sabaki's grandfather. So yeah, we're following Mal as she tries to investigate what actually happened, and who actually killed the head of the shop because she knows it wasn't her mother. Yeah, and the mystery was great and. I didn't expect in the end that it was going to be the person that it was. And yeah, I yeah, and I like the characters and I like the romance and the make the sweet making was good too. And I just generally tend to write mysteries. Yeah, this this one was excellent and I loved every minute of it. I the art was good too. That's it, that's it back in the flowers. So yeah, fantastic series. There's also three bonus volumes that take place after the end, which are kind of just wrap a few things up and have some, some of them are like their own stories. But there's so many interesting characters introduced. The story's interesting, the mystery stays interesting, there's twists along the way that you're not expecting. And yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just a fantastic read and I enjoyed it so much. And now we're up to my number one favourite Jose series ever. It used to be Something's Wrong With Us, but then I read this one. And now this one's number one. And that is... You might already know what this is. I do gush about this series quite a lot. And that is um, Don't Call It Mystery by Yumi Tamora. Again, another Yumi Tamora series. And again, another mystery series. I do write mystery. So this one is like a mystery or also it's a psychological drama. And we follow this college student called Totono. And all he wants to do is live a normal college life and eat Kerry. He's also rather quirky, and I love him. He's a he's a great main character. The things he comes out with, he likes to psychoanalyze people, and he likes to ask questions, and like, go, like be like, why is this a certain way, and stuff like that. And he's I just think he's a great character, and he just wants to live his normal college life and eat Kerry, but then he ends up getting wrapped up in a murder. He gets blamed for the murder of and I think it's another college student and he gets taken to the police station and he's put in the interrogation room and most of this first mystery takes place in this one room with Totono sitting in this chair just talking to the police officers and asking them questions whilst they're trying to ask him questions and being like well you it it, it like He's trying to kind of prove his innocence, but going about it where he's kind of questioning the cops and go trying to fix their lives and talking about their like they put their home problems and basically just going over things that are kind of irrelevant to the mystery at times. But yeah, he's eventually proven innocent. <laughs> But then afterwards, he keeps getting mixed up in more mysteries. 
Like, he doesn't try to get involved with mysteries. He's not a detective. He's not a policeman. He's just a normal college student. But ever since that first mystery where he got taken in to, for interrogation, he's just been, wrap, been wrapped up in more mysteries. And the, the cops kind of just know him now because if there's a mystery going around or if there's a murder happened, he, he tends to be there because not by choice, just because he, by coincidence, he just happens to be there. And there's also this other character who is comes into it in the second mystery. He, the, he's like kind of a, he's kind of an anti-hero villain kind of sort of character. But he's also trying to investigate stuff. And Totono is kind of intrigued by him and wants to know more about him. And then there's also this woman who comes into it as well who they she, he kind of becomes his friend and he often goes and talks to her after the mystery ends to kind of like just go over what happened and stuff yeah it's a great series i love all the mysteries so far all the mysteries have been extremely interesting the points totono brings up about things have been extremely interesting and yeah it's great again Totono is one of my favourite main characters. I just love his quirks and the way he kind of questions traditions and questions just random things. There's one point where he randomly brings up goats ricking feet as a form of torture. He just he comes out with some with some random things sometimes, and it's great. But yeah, it's. The mysteries are all very interesting. They're all very intriguing. It's not your typical mystery series because with mystery series, authors tend to leave clues throughout to so the reader can solve the mystery themselves. But you don't really get that. With don't call it mystery. You, it be, you'll be like kind of difficult for the reader to kind of figure out who the culprit is, unless you're very good at like reading the clues in the text because it's. It's very text-based. It's very text-heavy. As I say, the entire first mystery is just him sitting in this one room talking to these three policemen for the entirety of it. And that first mystery takes up a lot of, like, the first volume. It takes up all the way up to, like, there yeah it's it's great it's it's my favorite jose series i love it so much and i'm going to forever gush about this series because of how much i do like it so anyway that is my top five jose manga and how, what are your top five Jose manga? Are they similar? Are they completely different? Or do you like any of these? Do you not like any of these? Just tell me down in the comments. I'll be interested to know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you tomorrow for my final video. Not my final video ever. But my final video in the series. Of uh, my top five Seinen manga. So look forward to that. Bye.